Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to, my, I'm Sherry Auger. I'm the manager here at the Nonprofit Center. And I'm delighted to welcome all of you here to celebrate our ribbon cutting today. As you've probably seen from the signs around here, um, the Nonprofit Center has a new name and we're now the Nonprofit Collaborative of Howard County. The name was chosen to reflect that it's not just a building, but a place where the tenant organizations will work together to improve the lives of individuals, families, and the community. The spirit of co collaboration here didn't start though with the opening of this building, but was essential to the success of, of the entire project. Today, we'll be hearing from and about some of the people who work together to get us from concept to reality. So first, we'll hear from Alan Kittleman, who supported this center even before he was elected as county executive and has continued to do so. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry. Wow. Uh, before I make a couple remarks, I want to acknowledge some folks, and I know that John Wines will be acknowledging some other folks, some local folks. So. Um, we do have uh, Heather Campbell is here on behalf of Senator Cardin. There, where'd you come over here, Heather, because I know you have something from the Senator. Why don't you go ahead and let you go that first. This is such an incredible honor. I never, ever get to go first anywhere, anytime, so thank you so much. Um, I'm honored to be here on behalf of Senator Cardin. Um, just to say congratulations to the Association of Community Services, to Howard County, um, on this wonderful collaboration, which really is going to make such a difference for the nonprofits who are here um, to be able to collaborate, work together, and really uh, expand the reach of their services. So, on behalf of the Senator, Thank I'm. You, Sherry. Yes, Sherry, you want to come on Very forward? All right, so Sherry, this is presented in honor of the grand opening of the Nonprofit Center, and it's signed Senator Ben Cardin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Thank you very much, Heather. Uh, we also have, of course, Amy Stratton is here, representing Congressman Elijah Cummings. Thank you, Amy. From the state, we have Senator Ed Casemeyer. Where are you, Ed? I'm in the back there. Thank you, Ed. And his colleague, Senator Guy Gazzoni. Guy. We also have uh, Delegate Clarence Lamb. And I know Dylan Goldberg is here somewhere representing Shane Pendergrass. Thank you, Dylan. I know and Byron McFarland is here, Register of Wills. Thank you very much. Are there any other state representatives here? I think John's going to introduce the other county ones. Any one state I haven't gotten? I want to make sure. Okay, thanks. I'll be brief because you guys are out in the heat and it's not really fair for you, but I will tell you, it was almost three years ago where I sat in the River Hill Bagel Bin with Joan Reeson and Tom Meacham, there's Tom Meacham and Jennifer Pollard Hill, and we sat and we talked about what could maybe happen if we all finally would get on the same page. You know, this is something everybody wanted for about 20 years, but nobody ever seemed to ever, all of us get on the same page. Uh, but we got on the same page and a couple years later, things are really moving, me, but a year later things got really moving. And, and look what's happened. I mean, Joan Dreesen, let's give her a hand for her leadership. I was just telling Joan that her vision is happening right now with the collaborative, but her vision got even bigger. Because of what she has done, because of her leadership, we are going to have a community resources campus right here. We're going to have the Department of Social Services here, the Community Action Council here, the Department of Community Resources and Services, so many, the Community Action Council, they're all going to be in this one location so that people can get all the services they need in one location. Have a bus stop here, Jen Terraza, there's a bus stop here. <laughs> and, and that's what it's all about, folks. That's why Howard County is the best place to live in the country because we care about our citizens no matter who you are, everybody is valued and we want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to succeed and have what they need and I just want to thank you all for being out here for being so supportive and I just am so so thankful uh, that we have this great community and so thankful we have such great leadership out here and among all of you so thank you very much thank you Alan the Howard County Council also played a key role in ensuring the needed funding would be available for this project I now invite Chair John Weinstein up to say a few words on behalf of the council. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, 
So I'm uh, honored to represent the council and uh, the work that we did and with my colleagues, Dr. Calvin Ball, our vice chair, uh, Jen Tarasa, who did really make a point to make sure that transportation to this location was made easier. Uh, it's, a, it's a thing with Jen and she was dogged about it. And my, uh, my colleague, Mary Kay Sigety, as well, and I don't believe uh, Mr. Fox was able to make it here today. But uh, I will tell you that, that uh, I was talking to somebody inside and every once in a while a no-brainer shows up to the Howard County Council. And, and I don't know, my brief tenure of three years compared to my colleagues, um, there haven't been many of those. So I'm not sure if there were more when you guys were before I showed up. And I know they're blaming me right now for the fact that there are fewer now. But, um, but, but simply bringing together the resources that will come together on this campus it just makes more sense than, than we can all just simplify it. It really is just the right thing to do. It's the right time to do it. Uh, and honestly, it's the right way to do it. Uh, I look out and I see representatives from all these different organizations. And we are blessed in this county to have amazing nonprofits. It just, just superb individuals running good causes and delivering great services to people who need them. And, and often we forget in Howard County how great things are, that there are folks who do need help. Uh, and to make a place like this where it's easier to access, where it's easier to, to receive the services, uh, that's, that's what our job is, really quite simply, is to make sure that things like this, uh, these services are, are delivered to, to the folks who need them as easy as possible. And uh, this is just the beginning. I think there's a long history ahead for making this continual, to continually improve on this great idea and uh, I'm just honored to represent my colleagues who we, we just all, all we were trying to do is find ways to make it a little bit better but we agreed from day one that this was the right thing to do and I'm glad that we were able to play our part in this. Thank you all for the part that you've played and have a great day and good luck. So while there were many people who have been involved at various times in different aspects of the nonprofit collaborative one person in particular has been in the thick of it since the very beginning. As the executive director of the Association of Community Services, Joan Dreesen had the vision to see what an asset it would be to the county residents to have so many service providers under one roof, and she saw it to completion even when roadblocks came up. So, Joan? Thank you. I must say I feel truly privileged to have led this journey that created the nonprofit collaborative. As many of you know, this was not the first attempt. In the late 1990s, a very serious effort was undertaken by John Geist, I think John is out in the audience here, and of ACS and Barbara Lawson of the Columbia Foundation, and we learned from their experience. But making it happen took a leap of faith and the shared belief that it was critical to our community to create a center where services would be more accessible to residents and where nonprofits could more easily work together. Four years ago, after many discussions about the need for such a center, the director of the Department of Citizen Services, Lois Mikula, Lois, you're here someplace? There she is. She, she said one day, you know, we've got to stop fantasizing about this and see if it's really doable. So after spending three days at a conference in Denver, visiting nonprofit centers and discussing the opportunities and the challenges they presented, we were both convinced and committed. We really only lacked three things, the know-how, the manpower, and the money. <laughs> not daunting, not daunting, no. As we were leaving Denver, Lois purchased a plaque that summed up the journey. It read, leap and a net will appear. So leap we did. And somehow each time when it looked like this effort would come crashing down, someone appeared to keep it on track. I say that creating this center was a community-wide effort. And it truly was. We received so much support from so many people who believed in this effort. From the commitment of our very small, Maureen and Jessica are out here, very small staff who put in many, many extra hours to help. Our board of directors who was willing to devote our limited staff resource to this effort and truly become a working board, particularly our board presidents during the journey, Jackie Yang, Andy Culp, Tom Meacham, I know Tom Meacham's here, and Cliff Hughes and our treasurer, Brad Kloss. Brad, where are you? The financials 
issues have been interesting and so he has really been by my side throughout it but they have all worked steadily to keep moving this forward funding from the department of citizen services and the horizon foundation to hire the nonprofit center network to conduct our feasibility study and then later to hire jim truby and tom king to help figure out exactly who would be part of the center what did it need to look like a planning committee that guided our work for the first two years that included lois Nikki Highsmith Vernick from the Horizon Foundation, Beverly White Seals from the Community Foundation, Sandy Monk from United Way, Larry Tweel from EDA, and Karen Butler from the Department of Social Services. Abby Glassberg, our real estate broker, and I know Abby's here. She spent countless hours investigating properties, I can't tell you how many we looked at, and negotiating on our behalf. The law firm of Kearney, Keelahan, Bennett, Bresler, and Schur that reviewed leases and helped us to develop our agreements. And I know that Kevin's here, I know Tom's here. Mike Couch, Mike, you're out there someplace. Executive Director of Making Change and an ACS board member who stepped in for me when I needed to take a leave of absence. It was not a convenient time, but he did what it took to keep things moving. Jen Pollitt Hill, Executive Director of Hope Works, One of our largest tenants, Jen saw the vision for this center from the very beginning and helped others to see it as well. She has been a tireless advocate. Thank you, Jen. Our county executive, Alan Kittleman, who has been committed to the center since the summer before he was elected, that day in the bagel bin. He and his staff, David Lee, Sandy Schrader, Diane Wilson, and Lonnie Robbins, have been tremendously supportive as we explored properties and work to secure the necessary funding our county council. Thank you all. They worked to guarantee 10 years of support for the center. It gave people the security, to, the organizations the security to feel like they could locate here. So thank you. The Collard Foundation that very generously provided the funding to outfit our lovely multifunctional training facility and reception area where all that lovely food is. Thank you to Greg Collard and his foundation. Cynthia Lynch. Cynthia, are you out here someplace? Cynthia deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Cynthia is head of project management for the Housing Commission. She provided the know-how to develop this building into the center that you see today. For almost a year, there was rarely a day that went by that we did not exchange multiple texts and phone calls. She is really a dynamo, and I could not have done this without her. All of the nonprofit tenants, our new neighbors, who are making this a community and not just an office building. Sherry Auger, who joined the ACS staff as the center manager in March. Sherry's organizational skills, creativity, naturally friendly personality, and calm demeanor have made her the perfect person to manage the center and to help it to become a hub for our nonprofit community and for all of our residents in need. And of special note at this point are the contributions of the late Tom Carbo former director of the Howard County Housing Commission. When the commission split off from the Department of Housing and Community Development in December of 2015, I knocked on Tom's door to see if the commission might be interested in becoming not just a tenant, but the master tenant. His partnership provided not only the financial backing needed to lease this lovely building, but the expertise to help develop it into a space that could meet the needs of our 14 nonprofits and their clients. Tom was a great colleague, a great friend, and a great partner. We miss him tremendously. It took all of these people, and many, many more. There are far too many to mention in, well, it was supposed to be two minutes, but I know I went over. It took many people to make this a reality. My sincere thanks to all of you. We are looking forward to expanding our community as the Community Resources Center is developed over the next several months and to all of the opportunities that it will bring to better serve Howard County. Thank you for joining us here today to celebrate this very exciting new chapter in our nonprofit community. And for the net that so many of you held as we took this big leap. Thank you all. Thank you, Joan. One of the, the critical pieces, as Joan mentioned, in the development of this center was finding an organization to serve as a master tenant for the property. The Howard County Housing Commission took on that role. 
Carol McPhee, Chair of the Housing Commission Board, will now speak on behalf of the Commission. Before I, st I start, I want to recognize our uh, Commission members that are here. There's Marie Simpkins, um, Donzella, Beth Howman, Regina Mitchell, and I think Ian Kennedy and Chris Oxenham. I don't know if they're here. I didn't see either of those. But when, with Tom passing away, um, you can imagine it was so sudden that the commission members sat down and said, oh my God, but you know what happened? In meeting with Tom every month, he had 12 projects that were ongoing and his staff knew where we were with each of those projects. They didn't skip a beat, and neither did the Commission. We were able to look at everything that was on that table, and high on that list was the Nonprofit Center. It's been near and dear to me because I was one of those people that went with John Geist 20, 15 or 20 years ago to Delaware to look at the DuPont building that was donated to the Nonprofits of Newark. So for all of our commission members and our staff, Ada Best is acting director, and certainly Cynthia, who picked out all these colors and cord and everything, that was amazing. Just amazing to see how everyone has come together for this. And I, t I know Tom is uh, looking down on this and saying, okay, another one got marked up. We still have many more projects to go, but we're on our way. Today is a historic day, not because we simply open doors to a building, but because we open a new chapter in Howard County, in the Howard County story. A chapter about compassion, friendship, and teamwork. In the midst of bricks, drywall, and network cables, it's easy to lose sight of what this center really means to the single parent struggling to make ends meet, to the disabled veteran in need of a helping hand, to the young family trying to claw their way up a very steep economic ladder. What this center means is real opportunity and real hope. Real opportunities for our friends and neighbors to know that their community stands behind them. Real hope that the tremendous work that goes on in this center will inspire others who wish to make their corner of the world a better place for all. Yes, it may sometimes seem hard to believe, that a place as well off as Howard County has poverty and human suffering. But trust me, it's here. Those of us that work in nonprofits see it. Sometimes we have to commit, convince uh, residents of the community on where to look and open their eyes and try to help those that are in need. Uh, it's there, the uh, lower income families are there and then their situation is pervasive. And as a citizen of this county, I cannot express enough gratitude to all of those who dedicated themselves to battling the enemy. Having fought the battle myself for many years, I can tell you that this center is a symbol of major progress. In addition to being a one-stop shop for clients of social service organizations, this center will be an incubator for the ideas of the next generation of nonprofit organizations. To those innovators of tomorrow, I say thank you. I trust you and enjoy your new home. Now, in that being said, I know that many of you have asked over and over in the last six months or since Tom's passing, where are you with hiring a new executive director? I'm glad to say, happy to say, I want to introduce to you Peter Engel. Peter. Peter will start his new position as executive director of the Housing Commission on uh, June the 19th, and his door is open. He'll be meeting with a lot of you. We are just so happy to have after this struggle, because it's not a position that anyone can fill. This is a very technical type of situation, and we're pleased to bring him to you so that we continue our good work. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. As Joan mentioned, of the 14 organizations housed here, HopeWorks has the largest number of staff members. So I'd like to invite Jennifer Pollitt-Hill, HopeWorks Exec Executive Director, to come talk about what it means to be a part of this collaborative.
So I've been given two minutes to tell all the reasons why HopeWorks wanted to be part of the nonprofit collaborative, and for your sake and mine, I'm just going to share three of those reasons. At HopeWorks, we really pride ourselves on the comprehensive nature of the services that we offer to those who have been impacted by sexual and intimate partner violence. But despite the fact that we can deliver a wide array of services, our clients always, almost always, need more than what we can provide alone. The impact of these types of trauma on people's lives is profound and complex. And as a result, folks need new housing options. They face unique financial challenges. They may become food insecure. They may need government assistance for the first time ever in their lives or have immigration issues that are complicated by the abuse that they have faced. This need to have a better, more effective way to holistically serve our clients is the primary reason why HopeWorks has been a steadfast advocate of the nonprofit collaborative. Coordination and collaboration are not just buzzwords to us. They are intentional, transformative strategies to help our clients achieve the healthy and happy lives they deserve. HopeWorks co-location co here at the Nonprofit Collaborative is one step closer to this vision. Another reason why we were so enthusiastic about being part of the Nonprofit Collaborative is the administrative benefits. This location is more centrally located between uh, the variety of residential properties that we manage, which means that staff can spend less time in transportation and more time providing direct support to our clients. Thanks to the generosity of the county support, this location is also less expensive for us than our previous location, which means more of our dollars go to program services uh, and less to, again, overhead costs. And the beautiful training space that we have here really allows us to offer larger, more creative, more frequent activities that engage the community in addressing and ending violence against women. So in the end, administrative benefits is also client benefits. And the last reason I want to highlight that it was so important for us to be here is that we know that this is only the beginning. We've already seen how the vision and energy of the nonprofit collaborative has spread to creating a community resources campus. And I believe that more nonprofits will come to this location in the future, and together we will find innovative and creative ways to truly meet the intersectional, intersectional needs of our community. And, and I don't want to miss that. Thank you so much to all that made it happen. You've heard everyone named. There are others who we have forgotten, but it couldn't be done without all of us together. And that is how we will continue to move forward. Thank you.